Get in, loser. We're going shopping. Okay, but I'm not allowed back in Hot Topic because last time I spilled my Orange Julius on their stack of Deftones t-shirts. This, this is, is a hot dog, dog is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what? Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, the show we break down the world's biggest food debates. I'm your host, Josh Air. And I'm your host, Nicole Anaiti. And today we are going to be ranking the top new metal bands in the early 2000s. Nicole, number one draft pick, who you got? I never listened to new metal that much, but I know Korn was like the big one. Korn maybe the kind only... of invented the genre. I just know because one time they performed Twisted Transitor. Trans- Twisted Transistor. On SNL, and he had a really cool microphone, and I remember that specifically. I Okay, so today we're talking about what's the best mall food, but I think... Yeah, I love the mall. <laughs> well, okay, do you love the mall now, or did you love the mall when you were 13, and now both. when you go back, it reminds you of when you were young? It was both. So I loved, like, the malls that were, like, untouched. You know what I mean? The malls that were... Like the empty, old. creepy malls? No, no, no. The mall, No, that's how they feel now. Oh, I know what you're saying. Like, the old malls where there was always an express, always a mm. hot topic, there was a Sabaro. Spencer's gifts. There, I never had a Spencer's. You never my had mom, a Spencer's? My mall never had a Spencer's. It always had a hot topic, and my mom literally hated when I walked into Hot Dude, Topic. Dude, all moms hated Hot Topic. The reason Hot Topic exists is for moms to hate it. My mom literally thought I was going to, like, uh, believe in the devil pretty much when I walked into Hot Topic. <laughs> Because I thought I was an emo kid. Yeah, but that I really sense. was I an emo kid. And you were probably wearing like shirts. What was the band that their symbol was like an upside down oh, pentagram? Him, but there was a heart. His the heart. Ma- the heartogram. Yeah, his internal majesty, Vili Falau. Don't get me. Not Vili Falau. What's his name? Vili something. I don't know. Vili Falau was Mary Kay Letourneau's husband. Oh God, oh, God you're <laughs> oh, right. No, his name was Vili though. The lead singer of that band. And I loved his eternal man- majesty. When I think of malls, I get nostalgic for the same time period that yeah. you're talking about yeah. when the late night shows in SNL had new metal bands on yeah. to perform. Shout out to Kitty, who has a new single out. This isn't an ad. I'm just a big fan of that. Maggie, new Kitty single just dropped. Woo. I know she's a I fan don't. now. They performed oh, on Conan yes. back. It was cool to see metal, you know, on mainstream TV. Yeah. And it was cool to walk into a mall and actually be excited and not just be like, ugh, this place is absolutely dying. Okay. So I think we can talk about the best mall food from the peak of malls, which for oh, us was probably 15, 20 years ago. I love mall food. And then we can talk about the best mall food now. Okay. How is your relationship to malls different now than it used to be? Like, what do you go for the mall? What do you go to the mall for now? Why am I going to the mall? Yes. To do returns at Zara. <laughs> Wait, to do returns of clothing that you bought online? Yeah, honestly. I'm not the biggest, (laughs) but let me tell you, I'm not the biggest online shopper, but I do buy some things online and they never fit my proportions properly. So I always have to return it. But yeah, that's why I go to the mall or to entertain my niece and nephew. That's a good point. What did you used to go to the mall for? When you're like 13 year old emo Nicole, hair just singed and burnt down My with the straightener. Still, it still does. It's still burnt. <laughs> Taking the top down just MySpace photo. Oh my gosh. I used, God, I had to hide my top eight drama. <laughs> um, why did I used to go to the mall? Because yeah. my mom would drag me to the mall to go to Macy's all the time. My mom lived in Macy's and Bloomingdale's. Oh my God, I love that. Did you go my with your- My mom had the credit card. Did you go with your friends though? Was it like, oh, we're just going mm. to the mall to hang out? There was one mall. It's called the Century City Mall. And that's where everyone from all the schools would go and like hang out. Is that the Century City Westfield? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the mall that Paris Hilton used to like escape her home to go hang out oh, in. Oh, really? Yeah. So like that's Paris peak, Hilton are the same in that, that like retrospect. kinda that's like yeah. peak mall culture. Yeah, it was great because it was an open mall and like it was and like there was so much to do and there was an Apple store and you would go take pictures at the Apple store with your friends like this <laughs> and it was fun and like we would go to the food court and we would always 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 get Sabaro. Sabaro, Sabaro was was the mall food and of you were the meal. excited about it. Yeah, it was great. Are you kidding me? The stromboli, the baked ziti, dude. Oh my gosh. Also reminder, like I grew up in a Persian Jewish community. We wouldn't like go and eat Panda Express cuz you couldn't eat the chicken cuz it's, mm-hmm. you know, kosher stuff. And like you know, people would spread rumors and stuff and say, "Oh, they cooked their blank with lard." <laughs> oh, they cooked their blank with chicken. So we were like, "Ew, I'm not going there." And we would just Go to Sabaro because it was safe. That's so funny. When's the last time you've been to a Sabaro? Like properly been to a Sabaro. Not we order it for the show, but like you Mm. deliberately went there to get some Strombol and Big Z. Closing my eyes because I can't remember. Um, I think I was at the old Westside Pavilion with my mom before (sighs) they sold it to Apple. 
Google? Well, I think they sold it to Google, Maggie. Oh, is it a campus now? Yeah, and now they sold it to UCLA. Ah. So it used to be the best mall because they had the best shopping there. So my mom would always go there. Me and my mom would always go there together because my mom didn't work. She just like, you know, she just... <laughs> yeah, she was like a mall, mall rat. She was a, My mom and I were mall rats, yeah. <laughs> and we would... So we would go shopping there and then we would stand in line at the Sabaro. And I remember I would always... We would sit next to the carousel up in like the corner mm. so I could ride the carousel and eat pizza and ride the carousel and eat pizza and ride the carousel and eat pizza. <laughs> so that's my last memory when I was like 10, 11. No way. You haven't had it since. How do you think it would hold up? Oh my God. Because I've eaten Sabaro in the last five years. I mean, it was, I think maybe... Are you Michael Scott? <laughs> no, I know. And I... I've never liked Sabaro. Listen, they do perfectly fine work. Um, mm-hmm. People seem to enjoy their pizza. I will say their stromboli is probably the best thing they have at a Sabaro. Or the spinach. What was that white spinach pie that they had? It's a white that spinach was pizza, yeah. so really good. The pasta, I, I get roughly nothing good in my life from, like, mediocre red sauce pasta. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, uh, I'll go to a Little Tony's-type restaurant, sure. which is a local spot in the valley. The wettest spaghetti in all the San Fernando Valley. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just don't get anything out of taking spaghetti out of a vat of water and putting some red sauce on it. I'd sure. rather have any other... I'd rather have, like, greasy chow mein from either Panda Express mm-hmm. or whatever, like, local steam table sure. Chinese. That's what I want for cheap noodles. Yeah, yeah. But I had Sabaro at, I think it was the Cabo San Lucas Airport, maybe? Oh, I, I know. I think exa- this is a Sabaro. <gasps> it's like a giant food court. Oh, my court. God. I love that food court. They have the best uh, Panda Express there. What do you mean they have the best Panda Express what in the Cabo mean? Airport? <laughs> it's a- <laughs> what makes it better than all the other Panda Expresses? It's just my favorite one. <laughs> Because because let me tell you, when it comes to airplane food, like going going like in airport air- food and mall food are very similar. I disagree with you. I disagree with you a hundred percent because they have a lot of weird local spots that aren't really like oh in airports enjoy. yeah, which yeah. I don't like. They also do that at the mall, but there's something about airport food the quality is just so diminished. Mm-hmm. Mall food doesn't necessarily have that low of quality. But this is in the airplane food episode, so we're not going to talk about it. Okay, so mall food has gone through a bit of a renaissance. Somebody wrote a really interesting article. So when we think of mall food, I think of stuff like Panda Express and Sabaro, Mm -hmm. and there's like a Charlie's cheesesteak. Oh my gosh, Charlie's cheesesteaks. They are, again, I don't want to like poo-poo anyone's food choice. It sucks. Like Charlie's cheesesteaks is bad. Well, it's They make the worst cheesesteak I've ever had. It's uh, Really? That's a little, is it because there's lettuce in it? No, I mean, that's the one that's called a cheesesteak hoagie, and it's like a common thing it's the thing that i enjoy but it's okay. just their their meat is like gray and lifeless and the cheese never quite steams into mm-hmm. it the bread is very plastic there's a great local mini like not even that many of a chain it's a pretty big chain called philly's best that they make are a, they in malls no but they should be because they instead of charlie's they're all around southern mm-hmm. california and like they do pretty good work especially mm-hmm. for a chain so it's not like i just don't like chain cheesesteak places but man, somehow Charlie's is just in there, and I find it pretty terrible. I don't think it's that horrible. But, but you have those old school spots, right? Mm-hmm. And then now we're seeing all these kind of fancy malls because malls are dying. I and so they they malls. need, like, Westfield Century City. Caruso-affiliated malls? Caruso-affiliated so, malls. Why do they have a Sprinkles in there? I don't want a Sprinkles. <laughs> I want a Mrs. Fields. But that's, no, right? no. But Sprinkles <gasps> is the future, right? Like, this is oh, where we're going because now malls are dying, future. so they need a reason for people to come in. And so they're trying to, they have a lot more designer type stores that get a lot more tourists in there. And then they have these new restaurants like Shake Shack to me is the new New paradigm of malls. Which sucks because it's good. Yeah, but I want like, there's something about crappy mall food that I really like. I agree, but they can't survive on it. And somebody wrote this really great article for for Eater. I wish I could remember who it was, but they were talking about how the way that we view Shake Shack now is the way that our parents viewed Sabaro 30 years ago. Are you sure? We're like, yeah, back then, they didn't think Sabaro was crappy back then, right? They were like, cool, like, you can get a stromboli, (laughs) new thing, you know, but like a white pizza with spinach on it. It was something probably a little bit elevated, uh, and that was really cool, and that was probably a draw, Dippin' Dots, right? The way that we view sprinkles are the way that they viewed Dippin' Dots. Could you imagine how exciting it would have been to dip a dot for the first time? Wow. The ice cream of the future, Nicole, before we defunded NASA. (laughs) <laughs> I just, I just can't. There's something so like deeply nostalgic, and whenever I say like a Mrs. Fields or Wetzel's pretzels or an Auntie Anne's, Auntie Anne's. Wait, are you an Auntie Anne's or a Wetzel's gal? Oh, 
I'll eat whatever pretzels in front of me. <laughs> sure. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty loyal to Andy Ann's You dog. loyal? <laughs> not loyal. I'll eat Wetzel's, but. I mean, the Wetzel dog, it's pretty damn good. The Wetzel dog's pretty good. Uh, Andy Ann's, so if I'm going pretzels, I probably want to go sweet for Cinnamon some reason. Cinnamon sugar? Yeah, yeah they yeah, have like yeah, an yeah. Almond, de- almond Delight Crunch one, too. Really? Yeah. Okay, that sounds really yeah. good. But there's something about these. It's like the nostalgic signage and like mm. the Cinnabon of it all. Like, I don't Cinnabon. know what it is. Oh. Like, when you smell a Cinnabon in a in a mall, you know that you're going to get a 50% off clearance at Cotton On. You know what I'm talking about? No, but I do know about cinnamon rolls. I don't know what Cotton On is. <laughs> You've never been to I, Cotton No, I before? see the signs, but I don't look They're inside. They're always on clearance. What is it? Do they sell clothes? Yeah, it's like, it's so fast fashion. It's ridiculous. Most of the stores and malls aren't for me, and that's okay. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. What are they? So many of them, I just don't know what they do. I don't even know if you're they You're not a fan clothes. of sales? No, I know. I, I did go to a jewelry store in the mall once to maybe look at an engagement ring, but then it was way more expensive and worse quality than the other stuff. Yeah. But they were like, well, local family owned. And I was like, I don't know. This one has an app and I can just click what diamonds I want. Um, <laughs> it's something like that. Um, van store. I go in the van store. Journeys. Like uh, what's Journeys? That's another store. What do they sell? Jer- shoes. You've never been to Journeys before? They sell men's shoes? Oh my gosh. Journeys is so your store. Really? Yeah. Like actually, I, I walked into a Steve Madden. <laughs> do they, wait, do they make men's? No, Aldo. Aldo makes men's. Steve Madden doesn't make men's shoes. I don't think so. Okay, well, I walked into an Aldo, and uh, I got uncomfortable, and I left. <laughs> Is it I'm really it's... uncomfortable in malls. I, I, really? Yeah. Have we ever got, Josh, we've gone shopping together, me, you, and Trevor. Yeah, I bought mm-hmm. jewelry for Julia. And you bought a suit and a belt, remember? We went to the Nordstrom Rack. You don't remember this? Nordstrom Rack wasn't in a mall, wasn't in a mall though. Oh, what do you consider the Burbank Empire Center? Oh, this is a great distinction. So when we're talking about best mall food, Mm -hmm. we're not talking about best strip mall food. Because that's very different. That's very different because the best strip mall food is always a random Asian restaurant. Correct. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It'll just be like a random pho restaurant that also has like a Korean barbecue on it. Yeah, that's That's the best That's what you want in a strip mall. That's right. Uh No, but like that's different than... Actual mall, mall food. food, sure, sure, sure. Okay, so if we're going to the mall today, say, say we're, say we have. What are we doing? I was at gonna the say, mall? say we have like a two-hour lunch break. Are we, we gonna go shopping? That's the pipe dream. Yeah, but say we did that. Like, okay. what would we do? What would our itinerary be? What stores would we go to? More what importantly, mall are we going to. Um, depends. You can't okay, do- let's let's start with with our local one. Let's start with the the Burbank Mall. Because I, don't I like that mall because it has a Burlington Coat co- Factory, and you can never find anything good there. You don't like the mall because it has a store. You don't have to go into the Burlington Coat Factory. But They're not forcing so much, you to go into up, the Burlington Coat Factory. But it takes up factory. so much space. Okay. You don't. That could have been like a Macy's or a Bloomingdale's. Yeah, but you can or still just Trump. avoid it. You can still just not go in that. No, space. no. But it's not a mall where it's, it's not a mall where I can thrive. Okay. Oh, no, I get that. But okay, well, it's, it's just the closest one. It's not a mall that I can shop in comfortably because it's just not for me. Well, it's perfect because if we're looking at this podcast as utility for people to make the best, most efficacious food on what to eat in the mall. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, then let's look at a mall that you maybe don't like going to. Okay, fine. So we're going to the Burbank Mall. Okay, we're going to go to the Burbank Mall. Um, we're, you're going to walk by the video game store probably and see if they have a new Diablo or, some new, <laughs> or a new skin or something for Fortnite. Yeah, I, don't I, don't kid, Fortnite. I don't know what you kids do. I literally played one video. I Sorry, played David plays Fortnite. Um, and then we're going to go and then we're going to go see the random shoe cobbler that's there And because I dropped off your shoes <laughs> two Stop by ago. the army recruit. Recruitment center that's stop, next to the arcade. Exactly. Go to the arcade. Um, and then we're going to walk past Sears. And then we're going to see if there's a Fashion Nova. We're just going to walk by the Fashion Nova to see what's in vogue. But we were not going to shop there. And then we're going to go to, um, we're going to walk towards the food court. And then we're going to see some really great options. I am going to go towards my one true love, which is the Mongolian noodle spot yes i'm is, so glad you're bringing up mongolian barbecue at the freaking mall mongolian noodle barbecue where you self-serve yourself frozen meat you pour it in a bowl you put vegetables on top so unsanitary the cross contamination is a <laughs> must be a nightmare there. They, they they give you the bowl and then they say what kind of sauces you want they put whatever sauces and then on this huge 
like what is it like no, it's not metal it's like stone a huge black stone the size of this table yeah in the center hot. in a panopticon it is hot and the man has long chopsticks he pours all your stuff on <laughs> he pours the noodles on the noodles are beautiful the color of the noodles is something that you can only dream of it's a like technicolor dark orange they're like this technicolor color mm. that's so unnatural that I love so mm. much they mix it all up it steams there's fl- there's no flames but there's a lot of steam and there's drama and he's using these long chopsticks and then he takes it all and pours it into a styrofoam like clamshell container wraps it up in a bag there's it, so much heat there's so leaks, much heat it it has a 99 percent chance of leaking all over the bag but you don't care the napkins get wet they give you top six and a fork because they know that you're a busy woman you go you sit down and you eat it and it's the best damn food at the mall have you ever eaten Mongolian barbecue outside of a mall? <laughs> Neither have I. I've never no, come why close. Why would I? Why? No. There no. was one time I almost did where it was a Chinese buffet, all you can eat with a Mongolian barbecue station in Santa Barbara. And I was hungover and I went there and I stood by the Mongolian barbecue station. I filled up my bowl with all the frozen meats and nobody came and I just left the bowl and walked out. But I'm I've so never sorry. had it. I know. But that said, like, that is a unique mall experience. We're so lucky to be alive during a time where this is this is an experience we can, like, enjoy. I thank God that we missed the atomic bomb, but we made Mongolian barbecue next to a hot topic. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? No, I know Every exactly what you day. mean. I, I love it. There's the drama of it all. Mm-hmm. The fact that it's, like, it's flash frozen, but in my mind, I'm like, oh, it's fresh. <laughs> they're cooking it fresh in front of me. Sure, and they are. But, they, but they're also cooking all the other food, like, pretty fresh, too. You know what I mean? Mm, I don't know if there's anything fresh about a Wetzel pretzel. Really? Actually, no. They're, no. I mean, they're making the are dough you fresh. Me? You're right. That is so— You can see the raw dough. I have literally gone for GMM to go get Wetzel's pretzels, and the lady said, you need to wait 35 minutes while my dough proves. And I said, yes, ma'am. I will say that's a pretty inefficient model for pretzels. But it's pretty— <laughs> It's not a food that you wait but for. But it's delicious and hot. It's not like ordering the chocolate souffle at a fine dining restaurant, you know? <laughs> like, oh, please allow 30 minutes. I re- but I must say, I, my favorite right now in 2024 as a 30-year-old woman, Mongolian barbecue with the noodles, man. Sometimes I don't get the noodles. Sometimes I just do the stir-fry situation, and it's really good. Yeah, meat, veg, perfect. Um, Sauce? That was my favorite thing at the mall, the Laguna Hills Mall that I grew up going to. Never been. Um, you don't need to go. I haven't been back in probably 15 years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I also used to go to the Irvine Spectrum, if anybody uh, remembers the Irvine Spectrum. Shout out, Maggie. No, nope. that's real, one this weekend. Real 949ers over here. Uh, okay, let's let's look really quick. Burbank Mall. Okay. Here are the entire food options. So you got the food court stuff. So you got okay. stuff like Charlie's is in there. There's an El Pollo He says Loco. that with so much disdain. <laughs> they have a Charlie's. Dairy Queen, which I would like never really get a full meal from Dairy Queen. I love me a nice blizzard. I love me a dipped cone. But what mm-hmm. Dairy Queen did that saved all of mall culture is they bought out Orange Julius. Yeah. And it's like Dairy Queen is like, it's like the snack station. Like that's what they call it, right? Yeah. It's not like an actual DQ. Well, but no, I believe this is a grill and chill. Grill and chill, that's this what they call it. This is a grill and chill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you they can have get the chicken tenders with gravy. That's their other unique contribution outside of the yeah. sweet world. Um, Mongolian Grill. Love you. I love that. you. Mongolian Grill, I love you. There is a Mrs. Fields. Love there Mrs. Is, Fields. Here is, okay, so Julia. <gasps> Cease, do they have a Cease Candies? Uh, yes, but that does, I mean, that, you go and get a free sample, right? Oh my God, were you a free sample kid at Oh, Cease? was I a free sample? Do you know, if you know anything <laughs> about my childhood, you know I was a free sample kid and at then you, And then the best is you would like ruminate over it like you were thinking about buying it. <laughs> yeah. You're like, hmm, let's see, how, how much is the Bordeaux and how much is a Scotch Mellow? The Bordeaux. I was a Scotch Mellow girl. Oh my God. It was just, it was literal caramel and marshmallows. For people that don't know Seas Candy, I mean, it started in Southern California, yeah. but they mail it all over the world. Some of the best candy. Some of the best chocolate ever. I just buttercream surrounded by a chocolate shell is one of my favorite things in the world. <sighs> the bonbons. All of their, their Technicolor bonbons. Oh my god. Oh, I love them work. all. I love them all. <laughs> okay, so there's a panda. Obviously, there's a Mrs. Fields. Um, this is a unique thing that Julia grew up eating. Our Julia? Um, that she, my, well, my Julia. Our Julia. We, yeah, our Julia. <laughs> sure. Uh, no, she is not owned by anybody. Yeah. She's her own person. She's simply Julia's Julia. Anyways, <laughs> there's always some sort of like teriyaki adjacent place. Julia simply calls it mall chicken. Oh, sometimes is it the it's called bourbon people? chicken. The, the toothpick, toothpick people? people. Okay. 
Sometimes it's some sort of grilled chicken with sweet sauce. My dad dated one of the toothpick women. Aw, cute. Um, She was very sweet, and she used to bring over just pounds of mall chicken. And they had a couple kinds. They had one called bourbon chicken that was indistinguishable from teriyaki chicken. Never heard of bourbon chicken No, it's like not a thing, and I don't know where it came from. It was like, I think called like Fat Tuesdays or something, but it was definitely Japanese-owned. And so I think they flipped their teriyaki recipe. I don't know. Bourbon chicken, they had another one called honey mustard chicken that was just sugar and mayonnaise on hot chicken. But the toothpick mall chicken, to me, that's a unique mall experience that I love. Me too. Me too. Just sugar chicken. I know. But then, but there was something about it where my mom would just say, let's just get Panda Express because at least we know what we're getting at Panda. Mm, you know what I mean? Interesting. Yeah. My sister's a Pretty huge, lateral move. I will say that. Yeah, yeah. My sister's a huge Panda Express. Like, she's the biggest fan. Anytime we go to the mall, she's like, we're getting Panda. I'm like, oh, there's a Rubio's or like, there's like a cheesesteak place. She's like. We're getting panda. She's like, it's clean and it's consistent. And no matter where you go in the world, panda is panda. She's correct. Yeah. Panda Express really does a good job. They yeah, help yeah, it yeah. out. Uh, so is the other restaurant that you mentioned, Rubio's. I love Formerly Rubio's, Rubio's Fish Tacos, currently Rubio's Coastal Grill. Rubio's does good work. Started in San Diego, I believe, from a San Diego State uh, alum so whose family good. is from Baja. And they make great fish tacos for a large chain. They make great everything. Every time I go to the I Citadel agree. outlets, I know an outlet isn't a mall, isn't a strip mall, but... <laughs> The outlet Rubio's fire. No matter what, their bowls are great. Their salads are great. I feel like I'm doing an ad for Rubio's. I know. Just, I, I, I just love really Rubio's, love Rubio's. Um, okay, the last option here at the Burbank Mall, which is a pretty average mall, Panini Kebab Grill. And now this isn't just Panini Kebab Grill because I go to the Sherman Oaks Mall too, panini and I go to Masi, kebab. Masi's Kebab. I like Panini more than Masi's. You like? I think Masi's does a really good kubi day, but that is my typical. I will. If I'm going to the mall, especially by clothing, right? I don't mm. want to be like super bloaty. I don't want to eat like 1,500 calories worth of orange chicken sure, and chow sure. mein. I do generally elsewhere in life. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I want like, hey, I just need something to fill me up. I want to be kind yeah. of responsible here. I'll get a chicken kubide wrap, you know, yeah. eat it. Nice grilled meats, vegetables. That to me is like sustainable mall food. Do you know what I don't like? Ma. I hate it whenever there's fast food restaurants in the mall. Oh, like just a Carl's Jr.? Yeah, when I see like mm. a McDonald's. Shake Shack kind of like is the line between fast cash and like fast food. You okay? Yeah, I had to stretch my back. It felt really nice. Oh, I thought you... You hear it crack? I, yeah, I also saw that your face. That was my cervix. I saw you... You don't have one. Do you? Coccyx. <laughs> That's here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's <laughs> you, the cervix? You confused cervix with... Co- Why does my cervix hurt? Josh, women have cervixes. Well, okay, that seems pretty gender essentialist there, but go but on. My, uh, the best is you said <laughs> cervix, but it's the like lower it narrow end thought, of the uterus. Vagi- it's because you thought vagina and cock. What is what is a womb? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back. Let's go way back. You know what I hate, Josh? If we could turn back time <laughs> to the good, good old, old days. days. What were you saying? Josh, you know what I hate? Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I'm at the mall and there's like a fast food joint, like if there's a McDonald's in the mall, I'm like, why? Yeah, get out of here, Ronald. I don't, I don't, I don't want it. It's a it. beastly anachronism. I don't like it. <laughs> what is a... A beastly anachronism. I think it might be a Shakespearean reference. Anachronism? Um, anachronism. It means it's not of the time and place, right? Oh. Okay. Anachronistic, ana meaning like not cron mm-hmm. time. It's just like it's not, it doesn't deserve to be there. Yeah, I agree. Like I would love to see a mom and pop shop. Yeah, yeah I agree like, with I, that. I prefer that. I got a question. Okay, so I got an answer. I got a question. So I'm looking at the list of all the restaurants yeah. in the Burbank Mall. They also got stuff like <laughs> across the border, which is like a chain Mexican restaurant, yeah. California Pizza Kitchen. They CBK? Got CBK. CBK. They have a Zono Sushi, which is a local valley spot. Yeah. So there's like all the they're full service restaurants, but they're like not quite enough to stand outside of a mall. Yeah. They you know what I mean? Mall. Yeah. You know, I they actually, need to be attached. I actually used to work at a sushi mall kiosk court no way. thing in Torrance oh, for fun. about four months. And let me tell you what a wonderful array of people you meet at the mall. <laughs> it's such a trip. It was so, and it was so um, difficult just with the demand, like making sushi at the mall very hard job. Yeah, I bet. Tip tip your <laughs> sushi chefs at the mall because you never know what kind of battle they're facing. They're making sushi at the mall. It was really crazy. I t- This flooded a memory back into my cerebellum that I did not expect to have. Mm-hmm. Going to the Laguna Hills Mall, they had 
an all-you-can-eat sushi buffet called Onami okay. that, looking back, I feel like was 15,000 square feet. <gasps> this was just gigantic. <laughs> and it would cost, like, you would pay seventeen ninety nine at lunch wow. for it. And me and, like, my buddies, when we were 12 years old, we'd, like, scrape up all the money we saved from doing little odd jobs. And we would go to Onami. Nice. And we'd eat ourselves silly on just, you know, the most frozen food dyed, uh, what's the gas, the carbon monoxide tainted yeah. tuna that they use to make it pinker. Sure. And just guzzle that down. Mm. And that was a great time. And nice. also a restaurant that could only exist inside of a mall. Sure, yeah. Um, currently, similar experience, I go to the Kura Revolving Sushi Bar. In the mall? In Sherman Oaks Mall. That is our- It's in the mall? I, so I live, but don't find out where I live, but it's walking distance. I walk a lot. I can walk far. I go on a lot of hot girl walks now, right? <laughs> Trying to get some low impact cardio. Uh, right. And I'll often just like walk in a large loop that I end up at the Sherman Oaks Mall. Yeah. And then sometimes like Julia will meet me there and we'll go to Kura Revolving Sushi Bar. Is she also doing returns at for Zara? Dinner. She does do a lot of returns, yes. Okay, great. Yes, not necessarily at Zara. <laughs> um, there's a new thing that's happening that I really hate. What? What uh, is it? Tell me. Big, full-service, <laughs> fancy, fine-dining restaurants tucked yeah. inside of malls that are gross and weird. Yeah. What was that? Um, I went to a restaurant. It's called Angler. Is it closed now? It's closed now. Mm. It was just in the mall. It reminds me of Vegas, right? Yeah. Where you go to Vegas and you're in these giant monolithic casinos and everything's indoors and there's this restaurant that you've heard all these great things about, but it's just inside a casino and you can't see the sun and that's what this uh angler inside of a mall the chef uh-huh. is like a three michelin star chef and a food is very interesting but it was just gross because you're just in a mall mm. and i didn't like and you that. couldn't like detach yourself from like being like parking at the beverly center could not detach myself from it mm. i'm sorry i don't have opinions because i don't find dine at the mall yeah, you shouldn't. I'd rather just go to Fat Burger. <laughs> <laughs> all right, number one mall food of all time. What's the best food you've ever eaten at a mall? And like the most functional. Like when you think of the quintessence of mall food, what is it? It's got to be hot dog on a stick. Hot dog on a stick, baby. You I get know. the pepper jack. It's so crazy. I love hot dog on a stick. The colors. It's like, it's like what is it called whenever a bird likes shiny things? A magpie? Is that what magpies do? Is that what I don't know enough do? about the life of well, magpies. Well, it's what I'm going to do. It's when I see it. It's just like something goes off in my head. I'm like, primary colors, primary colors. And it's just so great. It's not my, I don't get it all the time. But if I see it, I want it. I get it. And I enjoy it. That's I, my answer. I like, what's the um, Brazilian barbecue restaurant inside the Century City Mall? Oh, my God. This is not a universal experience to most people. Listen, I love a lot of mall food out there. I love any Brazilian food. any Middle Eastern spot inside the mall is my official answer. Um, get yourself some grilled meats and vegetables and spicy, delicious, fragrant sauces. That's what I want in the mall. But when I go to the Westfield Century City, God, La Vaca. oh my God, Lavaca, yeah, Lavaca. You self serve from a buffet, and they you pay by weight, it's and then you so just point good. at the meat and ask them what you want, I and you can it. get just a lovely, healthy, spicy, delicious meal. They have those uh, boquino peppers. Yeah, I oh, love. Oh, I get a guarana soda. Let me tell you, I also will say honor. Okay, so my my standings are. Mongolian barbecue, <laughs> hot dog on a stick, Brazilian barbecue. Those I just love barbecue. I got like a that one Lavaca Brazilian barbecue spot. <laughs> I got any sort of Middle Eastern kebab spot. Uh, shout out to Masis. And then I got what's what's my third? I don't know. What's your third? Is it Mongolian as well? No, it's- I feel like Mongolian. I'm I'm happy to leave it as a moment in time for my childhood. Oh. Oh, mall chicken. Mall chicken. Anywhere that has bourbon chicken, some sort of teriyaki, universally mall chicken. That's my answer. Oh, and dip and Dots, of course. I still think they're the ice cream of the future. Hey, let's just go to the mall. What are you doing? Have you ever wanted to learn a second language? Or a third? Or more? Well, I have. Right now, I want to learn Arabic because I love listening to Arabic music, always have. And I finally really want to know what they're actually saying. What's your favorite song in Arabic? Um, Shik Shak Shuk. Dang, man. She was prepared. Uh, I feel that. <laughs> no, I feel somewhat ashamed that I've grown up in Southern California. And also, I've worked in restaurants where the predominant language spoken is Spanish. And I have a deep, deep love for Mexican food. And I hate that I don't speak Spanish. I really? Failed it. You I, don't speak at all? 
<laughs> Hablo un poquito. Okay. Uh, pero, you can get by. Yeah, I can get by. I can order at the taco stands and whatnot. But no, like learning Spanish in school was not for me. I've picked mm. up more Spanish just from having, you know, Mexican friends who spoke Spanish around me. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the cool thing about Rosetta Stone, right? It's the most trusted language learning program. It's available on your computer and your phone, and it actually immerses you in the language you want to learn, unlike learning in a classroom. Yeah, listening to someone speak simple phrases in Arabic paired with corresponding images and repeating the phrase back is not only helping me learn, but I'm learning how to speak it properly too. It listens to me as I repeat back the phrase and rates how I did so I can try it again if I want. It's really, really cool. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Rosetta Stone immerses you in so many ways. There's no English translation, so you really learn to speak, listen, and think in that language, which is super, super helpful, and it's designed for long-term retention. Don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a very limited time, a Hot Dog is a Sandwich listeners can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 50% off. So visit rosettastone.com slash hot dog. That's 50% off unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 50% off at rosettastone.com slash hot dog today. Hey, if you're out here trying to get incredible deals on premium cuts of meat, well, Butcher Box is the way to go. Yeah, I just love how easy the delivery is. You can have it shipped to work, to home, heck, even maybe the moon. You can't get, to, you can't get Butcher Box on the moon. Okay. No, you can't get Butcher Box on the moon. Maybe not the moon, but you get what I'm saying. Like you can Mars, have it shipped to maybe. 2026, <laughs> we're going to Mars. <laughs> They've got a lot of great deals that are hard to come by at the grocery store, so not only do you get a high-quality meat and seafood you can trust, you're also taking fewer trips to said grocery store, Nicole. That's so true. Also, I just love the quality of their red meat. I absolutely love their ribeyes, and recently, my box had steak tips in it, and I marinated it in this delicious, like, chimichurri butter, and I threw it on, like, the grill, and it came out so perfect. Yeah, you're a red meat girly. I, I eat <laughs> such a ridiculous amount of chicken. I got just a three pound package of their chicken thighs yeah. and I put it into a crock pot with a bunch of salsa verde and I had burritos for days and the chicken was delicious. It was also incredibly convenient. They got free shipping always, which that's ridiculous. That's right. With ButcherBox, you don't have to worry about what's for dinner. ButcherBox is offering our listeners the choice of a weeknight meal essential. Three pounds of chicken thighs. Two Get pounds the chicken thighs. <laughs> two pounds of ground beef protein or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a whole year i'm almost out of chicken thighs if anybody got any extra chicken thighs send me some chicken thighs plus get 20 dollars off your first order sign up today at butcherbox.com slash hot dog and use code hot dog to choose your free offer and get 20 dollars off josh honestly i have a little secret to tell you I'm listening. Oh. <laughs> so I'm not very good with like money or money management, but, but, but I heard of this nifty little app called Rocket Money that has legit changed the way I do my spending. You think that's a secret? You <laughs> always talk about how you spend money on the most frivolous things and how you forget oh, you're spending money. Uh, what if I told you? <laughs> I'm up? also not the most fiscally responsible oh, person man. in the world. But what the a good news is <laughs> Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, of which I have so many. It monitors your spending and it even helps you lower your bills. It shows you all of your subscriptions in one place and if you see something you thought you unsubscribed to months ago, you can cancel it now with a single tap. No more getting on the phone with customer service. Take that Bulgarian track and field streaming services. Yeah, it's great because um, if you have push notifications on, they literally let you know so you're never caught off guard. Um, all you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of everything else. Isn't that rad? That's pretty rad, man. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year. That's a lot of scratch with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash hot dog. That's rocketmoney.com slash hot dog. Rocketmoney.com slash hot dog. Sports Jordan Myrick has gone and ranked seven frozen TGI Fridays apps from worst to best. Head to Sporked and search TGI Fridays to find out how frozen potato skins match up against the frozen spin dip. All right, Nicole. We've heard what you and I have to say. Now it's time to find out what other wacky ideas are rattling out there in the universe. It's time for a segment we call... Opinions, Opinions are like casserole! Like casserole. No, no. Do you want me to show that I realize you're singing? Let's get to that first opinion then. My name is Jude. I'm from Boise. 
Um, Boise. I'm sitting here watching Chopped, and <laughs> I think Josh would be really good at Chopped. Josh, would you go on Chopped? Josh, you should go on Chopped. <laughs> and also, you should try Log Cabin Maple Syrup no. on Rice Krispies. Yes. Oh. I tried that one night, and oh my God, it's so good. Sounds like Trevor. I used to put honey on my Rice Krispies. Now I put Log Cabin. Interesting. Okay, bye. Doesn't he have like a similar cadence to Trevor? He says, oh my God. There was oh a similar god. way he yeah, said, oh my god. Wait, is that a Boise accent? I don't know. I don't know, but it sounded like Trevor when he says, oh my god. Because I think you and I have similar things with vocal fry and up talk, which yeah. would belie our Southern California sure, upbringing. Sure. So certainly, certainly, certain accenture okay. belies Boise yeah, upbringing. Okay. Chopped, chopped. I feel like I would crush. I feel like I would crush on okay, Chopped. I think you should go on Chopped. I asked you like four years ago if you'd ever go on Chopped. And you know what you said to me? You said, Tell me one chef you remember that was on Chopped. Oh, I did say that. And I, I said no, no. This is I when can't. people argue that. Okay, this is let's let's get into the weeds a little bit. This is when people are like, "Hey, I think going on Chopped would be a good career opportunity for you." It would not be. It would not like like it would be it'd be cool. It'd be cool. I'd like to do it. It'd be I a fun know. thing. But that's what it would actually be is a fun thing. But I would take like several days out of my life to they shoot it in New York. I would travel to New York. I would have to go on casting calls with people. And frankly, like we reach a lot of viewers with what we currently do. Mm-hmm. So it'd be almost like uh, the opportunity cost of going on Chopped would mean like kind of uh, fewer people seeing you network tv is not pulling numbers these days we get like a lot of we get a lot of views on youtube we don't get the most views on youtube for anybody we kind of get a lot of views on youtube so it'd be a thing that i would do for fun and passion and again i'm a huge fan of the show i love the show Such paradigmatic show. for the entire food ecosystem mm-hmm. um but yeah i don't just, think it, you it should take a lot. i don't think you should be a contestant on chop i think you should be a host on chop oh my god that uh, imagine me sitting or next a judge, to Manit, I'm sorry, me host. sitting next to manit chohan yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and scott Conan. man come on I, I'd, I'd love that. I think you'd be a great um, judge. I also think you'd be a good contestant. But again, the juice, the juice is not worth the squeeze for being a contestant for you. Yeah. And even like winning and you're winning $10,000 would be great. And it's like, oh, after taxes, you know, uh, like 200, <laughs> maple ah. syrup on, on Rice Krispies. Ah. Oh, my God. <laughs> so good. I think that sounds really good. I, I generally prefer the flavor of honey over maple in most cases, though. Really? Yeah. Why? I don't know. Ma- That's maple's- so... That's so weird. Is it weird? I mean, they're kind of just... You're uh, so weird. It's, it's not that weird. It's like a binary. <laughs> I think honey's consumed way more than maple. Maple, in fact, is such an ultra-specific flavor. Could you imagine, like, explaining to somebody in a foreign country, going to, like, Thailand, be like, yeah, we got this one tree, and it bleeds, and we stab it, and then we drink its juice. That's a yeah, very specific Yeah, they probably honey's, have a tree that does that as well. Yeah, probably. But, like, honey is like a Sugar universal cane. thousands of years old thing. Honey's in the Bible, man. Is it? Actually, okay, That's so manna. You're thinking of manna. No, no, no. So I'm thinking of the lion, milk, and honey. Oh, the land of the land of milk and honey. But I believe yeah. milk actually refers to fig, the fig sap. That's what milk meant. Yeah, that's that's what one person told me that that referred to the milk of a fig, and then honey referred to Ceylon or date syrup. Interesting. I don't know if that's true at all. Somebody told me that, and I have not thought to fact check it. Hmm. But, so I don't know. Anyways, I, I, I kind of just prefer honey, but I'm glad that you found something. I would do honey and flaky salt on a Rice Krispie. Next opinion. Hello, mythical Josh and Nicole. <laughs> Hi. I discovered a <laughs> money-saving food hack if you Love have money. some freezer-burnt meat okay. that you would otherwise throw away. <laughs> no matter what the cut is or what type of meat it is, Adjust your broth accordingly and just make a stew. Yeah. Just cook correct, the right. meat to death and any textural changes from the freezer burntness mm-hmm. won't show up. Works great and you don't have to throw away meat you spent money on. Correct. Smart. Very good. Smart, smart, smart. The hack. Um, the hack to end all hacks. That's a hack for like vegetables that have gone super limp and rotten. The, the biggest money saving hack in any kitchen is just make a stew. So true. Out of anything, you can save so any single thing. Dead herbs, just water, yeah. seasoning, and anything that's about to die. Just yeah. Yeah, the world was built on soups and stews because it, it can hide a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
You're uh, so right. Old meat. I mean, don't don't play with old meat. You know what I mean. But old also, and freezer burn are two different things. Also, I we we've talked about this, right? Mm-hmm. Where I was convinced that um, steaming vegetables wasn't actually that much better for you than boiling, and then I looked up the data. Oh, you and did. They, they really retain so much more moisture when you steam. Or sorry, them? so many so many more nutrients. Steaming versus boiling. Really? Steaming versus damn near any other technique. Well, how? Um, yeah. So I was kind of shocked. There was a study that came out of China. Um, in God, it was like it was like really the mid two thousands. Um, but that's absolutely true. But the difference is if you boil the vegetables and then consume the soup? consume the liquid. So, which is to say, you make a soup, you're getting all the nutrients. So you're really preserving a lot of nutrients too. But what if you eat it raw? That's the best way, right? Okay, raw, raw is probably the best way. Steaming, I don't think was that much farther away from raw, dude. There's like, there's something about it. There was something um, back in the day when people were doing like raw vegan, and there's like it couldn't get to a certain temperature. What was that? Thirty eight degrees or something? Yeah, yeah, the raw vegan thing. And, and there is, I believe, some nutritional breakdown at high temperatures, but it typically has to be at that high temperature for a very long time, which mm-hmm. I guess soups could be. But like that nutrient loss wasn't nearly as drastic as like pouring off the liquid. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, so interesting. I think, and then also, uh, humans were only able to evolve because we learned how to cook food. Right? I agree with that. If we spent all of our days just ha- chewing through raw meat and sinew or chewing grassy leaves, think about spinach, right? Yeah. Think about how much more spinach you can consume when it's cooked versus raw. So much more. And how much less time it takes. So much more. Right? And so that's, you know, I raw vegans, if you're happy and feel good, keep doing what you're doing. Um, but yeah, man, soups. Cooking all the nutrients. Us more human. Delicious, yeah. Literally Hell smaller yeah. stomachs, bigger brains. Isn't that so great? I, it's great, man. We're to we cook is to we are cook also a human. part. We are also a part of that like like progression. Yeah, mythical kitchen. We are. We're trying to make the stomach smaller and the brains bigger. You know, it's funny though. I think that cooking may have also led to the introduction of cancer into the human gene pool. Well, you know the whole thing about charred meats. Yeah, carcinogens. Yeah, carcinogens, yeah, 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 yeah. Man. It's eating fire. But it tastes so good. Ooh, I do love me some barbecue. <laughs> Hi, Josh and Nicole. Hi. My name is Nora. I love your podcast. I love that name, Nora. I... My controversial food opinion name my son, is Nora. that the only way to eat a marshmallow is burnt. The outside has oh, to be bur- perfectly crispy and charcoaly, and the inside has to be ooey gooey. And mm. just, that's the perfect and only suitable way to eat a marshmallow. Uh, that's it. Love your podcast. Bye. Speaking of uh, carcinogens, oh, def, definitely. That yeah. is just burnt sugar. I know, and like, I love it. It's so I love. How do you burnt- roast a marshmallow? We haven't talked. Have we never talked about how to roast a marshmallow? I love roasting marshmallows. What's so your technique? Much. Um. Well, I burn the ever living crap out. of it. When you say it. burn, do you black black? You light it on fire. Black black. You light black. It on fire and blow it out. But my husband, you know, being the perfectionist he is, he literally just like. He just twirls it like a rotisserie Mm -hmm. and makes sure that it's golden brown, like golden brown, like the perfect tan person on a beach. (laughs) And then he... Like a 65-year-old Italian-American on the Jersey Shore. And he pulls it out, and then he dips it in the fire, pulls out, eats it. (gasps) While it's on fire. Um, Yeah. No, no, no. He blows it out. party trick. No, no. He blows it out. Takes Bacardi 151 and goes... (sighs) But he does all that work, and then he just does it like... Really, really hot, and then eats it. <laughs> well, when you light a marshmallow on fire, and I'm curious because they said ooey gooey all throughout. When you light a marshmallow on fire, it's not cooking the center, right? You're getting like, like a medium, my, sh- like a medium rare Chateaubriand. I like when my center. I like when there still is a little bit of shape to my mallow on the yeah. stick. But you eat the whole thing. You don't because I remove the skin and oh, then I eat the skin and I then I torch it again. But then I was a little bit more mature. Mm. I like matured. Mm. I don't believe in pleasure delaying. I want it all now. Uh, I will say the best way to eat a marshmallow, though, is just raw. No. Because you lose the texture. The point of a marshmallow is the fun texture. Like a cat, I'm attracted to novel textures. You keep saying that. It's my favorite thing to say. It's your favorite thing to say. It's your favorite combination of words to say recently. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Cat, did you know that cats love novel textures? It's like a stock epithet, like Aegis bearing Zeus. Sometimes I think nobody has any idea what I'm talking about. I know what about. that means. Aegis bearing Zeus is what they say like in like st- like when they yeah, I know yeah. what it means. I know what it's it means. Set of Not everybody knows what it means. Novel texture enjoying yeah. cats. The brown Aegis fox jumped Zeus. over the brown orange dog. What is that? That's nothing dog. to do with anything. That's Yeah, the, huh, that's that's also the quick text. Brown fo- what? What are you talking about? A stock epithet is like a set descriptor of a character. 
As in like novel uh, texture enjoying Josh or oh, wet food enjoying Josh. Oh, I just bearing were, Zeus. Oh, I thought it Zeus was Zeus is depicted with a shield. I'm depicted enjoying novel textures and wet foods. Oh, I thought you were just saying like it's just stock. Like somebody just wrote it and put it in. No. Oh, you're but the sentence that you just described is the sentence is stock. that uses all, all of the, the letters of yeah. the alphabet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, next opinion. <laughs> Hi, this is Lindsay from Northern Wisconsin. Um, my Let's go. food opinion, I guess you could kind of call it a food crime as well, um, is I put the end of the bag of tortilla chips where it's all crumbly and everything like that, dump it in a bowl, add like the cheap star queso, and then okay. eat in the microwave for at least a minute so the queso kind of soaks up into those um, tortilla chip crumbs. And it almost is like a poor man's Chili chiles, I guess you could uh, call it. Kind of gives that same good. vibe. Um, yeah, it's delicious. And it uses up the last little tortilla chips. <laughs> Love the podcast. Thanks, guys. Bye. This Thank isn't you. a food crime. What's the opposite of a crime? Uh, like a like a deed. This is a, a food deed. 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 Yeah. This is a food deed. I would totally totally eat this well what it won i just want to say i love regional accents and i think you have a beautiful accent i love the way you said big um (laughs) in wisconsin um but uh was it wisconsin is a drinking state that has a cheese problem or something yeah (laughs) Uh, um what do you do with the chips at the end of the bag the crumbs i lick my two fingers and i go in there and then i Finish it. And then what else do you never had? And then, <laughs> <laughs> you I, pervert. I generally don't. I, I'm not the biggest like queso fan. It's kind of one of those foods that people would assume that I really love. And I I don't know. I'd probably rather just have salsa. Um, but I love, I like salsa more than queso too because sometimes too much cheese. Yeah. It makes me it makes me kind of want to vomit. <laughs> I love cheese, though. You have di- you do have digestion issues. It's gotten so um, much better, though. I guess I don't even... I'm not the biggest cheese guy. I haven't been as farty because I stopped eating so much cheese. That's huge. No, Are I've noticed, pro- actually. It's actually yeah. been really a boon to morale for everybody. <laughs> I love taking the end of the chips, and I pour them into the bowl of salsa, and then I eat that almost as a gazpacho with a crunchy garnish. So, I see you in Go Badgers. <laughs> <laughs> go Green Bay Packers. Go Pack Go. Go Pack Go. <laughs> like I Fra- love Francis the Packers. Francis McDormand from Fargo right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those Packers. <laughs> uh, you think Jordan Love's got what it takes to actually go deep in the playoffs? You know, he's, you know, being a rookie, I think that. <laughs> yeah, three um, years ago being a rookie. <laughs> yeah. He did. Uh, <laughs> I think he shows a lot of promise. He sure does. I mean, it's a shame that he had that injury. Recently, <laughs> yeah, you know, everyone's a little banged up all the time in football. You know? I have a lot of high hopes for his um, position as a quarterback. Yeah, as a quarterback, as a quarterback yeah. especially with Aaron Rodgers leaving and That's going to the Jets. Go, Nicole, go. I think that he will show a lot of promise and hopefully hold up the legacy of the Packers to eventually beat out. The rest of the people on the in the in the division, in the which division, is in in the, in the N- in, uh, in the NFC North NFC NFC North NFC North yeah there she goes NFC North East uh, no no you could just have to saw the North and then I think when you get Christian Watson back somebody that can really stretch the field you got Romeo Dobbs he's proved a really really fantastic possession receiver Dontavion so... Wicks I think uh, really uh. came. Threw in the slot last year, so Aaron good. Jones. I mean, just what Aren't a talent! So, I mean, I mean, with with uh, Cooper Cup <laughs> doing <laughs> doing his thing, it's been quite quite a showing. And 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 the Packers' best lineman, Persian. Oh my God, David Bakhtiari. Bakhtiari? Bakhtiari, he's, now he's Josh, been hurt. I knew it. I, I knew, knew that. He's been hurt for like three years. It's actually really sad. I hope he can get healthy at some point and really resume his career. Thank you so much for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. We got new episodes of this podcast on Sundays. <laughs> the video comes out on Sundays. The audio, do you not know when our the podcast comes out? The audio comes out on Wednesdays? Yeah, definitely, man. It's been that way for four years. <laughs> No one has it. I guess I always read this part, and yeah. you never read this yeah, part. Yeah, no. If you want to be featured on Opinions of the Casseroles, <laughs> give us a ring and leave a is quick message at 833-DOGPOD1. Like? Is that what I said? I'm Nicole. <laughs> I sound like a Muppet. <laughs> For more Mythical Kitchen, check us out on our other videos. We launch new episodes every week. Watch Last Meals. It's the best show on the internet. I also Hi. think Myth Munchers is also probably like the 14th best on yeah, the it's, internet. It's, it's top 17 for top sure. Se- <laughs> and then that sabotage one? That's, that's like... Bad. <laughs>
It's good. I still, I still like fancy fast food. I still think we fancy fast food. Great show. Uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>